so here we are again I love this system it works so good but we'll minimize that and we will start up my um, Celestron CPWI software which is another piece of software that I'm really enjoying and mount USB um, last alignment ready so it's just finding its home position right now. And once we've done that, we should be pretty good to continue. Okay, so it wants me to pick a star. Um, we're gonna pick Archana. I'm gonna go to Archana. Now while this is doing that, I'm gonna open up ASI Studio. Oops. And I'm just going to connect a camera, hit play to preview, so that way I can see, hopefully, where our star is. Um, it's not far off from the last uh, the last time I was out here. I left the mountain all the outside, so um, uh, we haven't really adjusted anything there. Um, so it's not too bad. I might see how we go with adjusting it using the slew controls on the um, screen here uh, continuous mode it's always a bit of fun setting everything up isn't it for a uh, imaging session but I thought I'd show you guys what I've been doing um, lately that looks uh, pretty centered to me so I'm going to stop all this close that down centered and now I'm going to just uh, send it back to its home position and we're going to open up Nina now I've been really enjoying uh, imaging with uh, with Nina from the last session so hopefully tonight goes just as smooth NGC Alright, so I was having a bit of trouble trying to pick up um, NGC 2070, the Tarantula Nebula in the um, LMC and it seems like it can't pick it up, can't find it. Um, that's strange, I tried using uh, the, the Coldwell name as well um, and that still didn't work so I find that a bit strange and I might have to look into that because uh, the Tarantula Nebula is one that I will be wanting to set up for a mosaic later on. Um, so, that sucks. But, we will we'll look at something that's a bit more... Um, that everyone knows. We'll look at the Great Orion Nebula. Now there we go, let's see if we can load it up. A bit better image. Fortunately, I don't think we can because there's no data going through this. All right, um, so let's plan this mosaic. So I'm gonna increase my panel size. Uh, the rotation of it because I know that my cameras um, are set to this orientation right here. Now that is one thing that's going to be a bit difficult with mosaicing is the camera orientation because we can't exactly have a rotator or anything like that on them. Um, so that might take just a little bit of extra setting up just to get them uh, right. But anyway, we might go for a uh, a four panel, mm, no, let's go larger. Um, let's go for six panel image of Orion, and I'm going to add this as a sequence down the bottom. All right, so we'll get rid of this one here, and we've got the first panel uh, two, three, four, five. 
all six panels loaded in there. Now I'm going to turn on slew to target and um, center target on each one. And this way it should plate solve. Um, every, every, every time it goes through its next mosaic it should uh, plate solve that. Last one. All right, so we're all pretty well set there. Now, what else do I need to do? I'm going to increase my exposures. Um, let's go 10 exposures at 30 seconds. And we'll do this for each panel. So I'll just go along and do this. I haven't looked into um, setting up the actual sequence um, so that way I don't have to keep doing this every time but we will do this for now because I know it sort of it works a bit time consuming but it works I do need to do the same for the second rasa now again the second rasa um, the cameras still aren't synced with each other I don't have that guide scope uh, camera the new guide scope camera yet um, but it should be on its way now uh, the second rasa I'm just gonna let that just go throughout the whole session so I've got 10 images at 60 images total I'm gonna set that probably about 80 images because there's gonna be some movement between them and I'm just gonna turf the others because this is just a trial um, to make sure all the mosaicings are working because in the last video I didn't set the orientation of the cameras so therefore the mosaic I, wasn't nowhere near as what it should be um, so fingers crossed this works uh, this time and if it does then I'll be pretty happy with it and we'll be ready to go out uh, under some dark skies um, the moon is just starting to rise at the moment we've got about a 10% uh, luminosity value there of the moon so fingers crossed we get a couple more clear nights before that moon really makes some uh, damage now i know these videos have been a little bit longer lately and i guess it's just because i want to mix things up and um while we're doing a bit of testing with the programs and how to do things uh, i just want to show you the process of um, how i'm doing it rather than smaller little segments so i think I think we're done there, so let's check out the uh, image, yeah, look at that, Orion, nicely in the middle, stars look good, let's check out the uh, the other Rasa, so we'll take a quick one second image of that. And again, looks reasonable to me. Now let's go back to our sequence. Let's hit play. Hang on, there's something else I want to check too, and that is uh, imaging park mount when it when the sequence ends. Sequence ends because I want to see what um, that does, as well as uh, just warming up the camera. Alright, so we go back to sequence, hit play, and I'll start play on this one on Rasa 2, so that's just going to go through and just image, um, not too bothered about the images I've got to throw out there. Plate solving, And it looks like we're off and running so I'm gonna let this uh, run through its sequence and we'll come back to it uh, a bit later
that's it for the mosaic can. Fingers crossed it uh, all worked how it should work. Um, the only thing I can see maybe being a little bit of an issue is maybe the camera orientation. Um, but we'll have to see there. Now, I did have a problem, and that was the uh, the cameras. So, um, because I'm running the 2 zwo 294 MC Pro cameras, when I was imaging with one, it was on the same driver as the other, so they both couldn't download um, the images properly. And I found that a bit strange, because even if one was on, say, ASCOM 1 and the other one was on ASCOM 2, um, and it distinctively showed the differences in the drivers there, their ID was still both the same. And the only way I ended up fixing that was to unplug it from a USB port and plug it into a different USB port, and then it all worked fine. So if anyone's ever encountered that problem before, um, let me know what you did to, uh, to fix that, because at the moment... Um, that was my fix, and I think there's just a little bit more to it than, than just that. Uh, so we'll see how we go uh, with the next session. Um, all in all, I'm really getting, uh, really enjoying using Nina. Um, I'm going to enjoy the next aspect of it, which is guiding and then syncing between the two instances. Um, so that way the, the cameras can pretty much... Uh, the secondary camera I'm not going to be blowing out um, losing uh, frames so it should pause and wait for the other camera to you know catch up and do it do its thing um, which it does quite well the other thing I want to look into is the uh, is why it couldn't pick up uh, NGC 2070 um, so I'll have a bit of a look at that and the advantages of all this is that you can play around with it um, offline too so uh, I'll have a bit of a look around at that and, and see what uh, see why I couldn't get the tarantula nebula. Um, yeah, so that's it for tonight's imaging session. Fingers crossed everything went well. We'll, uh, we'll see when I start um, joining all those images uh, together. And uh, fingers crossed it works. All right, guys. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Um, leave a comment. And until next time, take it easy. See you.